In the screencast, you'll see how to create an infographic using the online visual design tool VisMe. So to get started, if you don't have a VisMe account, you'll want to click the Start Creating button and create one. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once you log in, it brings you to a dashboard screen and you'll cre click the Create New button and give your project a name. There are limitations on the number of characters. And click Continue. The next screen allows you to choose the type of project you would like to create. In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate the infographics projects. And once I click on that type of project, it gives me some templates that I can start from. Let me scroll through just so that you can see the variety of templates that are available. And starting from a template is a great way to get up and running very quickly. You can replace the content with your own and already have the layout and a lot of the elements there for you. So as I scroll down more and more templates become available. I'm going to keep it simple and start with this how to sell via email template for this screencast. All right, so the infographic that I'm going to create, I have already planned out in my mind. I'm going to create an infographic that contains five guidelines for how to use social networking in higher education. And I have done my research, I have read uh, a variety of articles, and I have already decided on what these guidelines are going to be. So as I look at this template, I'm trying to figure out where are, where's my content going to go. So I'm going to put four of the guidelines here, replace these four elements, and I'm going to put the fifth one here, which means I can get rid of the rest of this content and move the sources section up. And I'll also need to shorten my canvas. So to get rid of content, you click on the element and you choose the trash can icon and you click OK so that VisMe knows that yes you want to delete that element. So I'm going to go through and delete all of these elements. So I've gotten all of the elements in that section deleted. Now I'm going to move up this section so that it is right below the last section. And I have a couple of text elements that I'm also going to move up. I only have two sources that I'm going to use, so I'm going to delete this third source text element since I don't need it. And let me move these up. Now I could recreate these by just inserting text instead of replacing the text that is already created, but I'm just going to, for the sake of demonstration, stick with the text that was provided. All right. So you might notice that there is a background element as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I just right clicked on it and I click OK. So I've got extra canvas that I want to get rid of and so to do that I'm going to click on the very upper left of my screen and choose canvas size and I'll see that currently I'm using a custom size of 800 pixels wide by 2300 pixels high and I'm just going to guess that I need to take about uh, a thousand pixels off of that and let's see if that was enough that looks fine 
All right. I also want to change the background color of this sources block. So I'm just going to select that element and click on the color in the color in the formatting palette and then click fill color. And I'm going to choose a green color. And so I slide the bar to the area and then I can choose, I can drag the, the color option to a color that suits me. And if you look at the um, red, green, blue number scheme, it's 38, 77, 40. If I wanted to reuse that color in another part of my canvas, I would just use that same number instead of have to find the exact one by using the sliders. So I'll click apply. Now the sources that I have for um, this example, I have two articles. So I'll go ahead and add those in now. Now if I want to italicize the journal name and volume number, I highlight it and I choose the italicize button in the formatting. All right, now I'm going to change the title of my infographic by double clicking in the title block at the top and replacing that text. And you'll notice that I need to adjust the size of this text block. So if I highlight it, I can choose a smaller size from those available. So if I want to replace the images that are provided in this template. I can first delete the ones that are there or I can just see what's available by going over to either the shapes and icons or the images. There's also videos, um, charts and graphs, and audio options. I'm going to choose the shapes and icons and the silhouette section of images and then I'm going to choose web icons and I'm going to find one that I would like to use in this infographic so I click on it and it opens up into my canvas if I want to change the color to be the same color that was uh, in the template, I can click on the image and choose the fill color and note that they are using a 139, 42, 0, 139 red, 42 green, 0, blue. And I can use that same color for my image instead of black just by typing in that same color code. I can drag the corners to make it larger and I can rotate it at the top. So I can do something similar to what's being done with the template. make this a little bit larger and then we're going to duplicate it. There's a duplicate option. I'm going to duplicate it two times and move them into place. Uh, as I'm moving these items around, the canvas provides some lines so that I can try to align things a little bit more straight. All right, so now it gets into the guidelines that I'd like to post. I'm going to title this section Posting Information because the four guidelines that I'm going to talk about in this section have to do with posting information in social networks for higher education faculty. So the four guidelines that I have come up with based in my resources are privacy settings, and I will 
I'll drag this box a little bit wider to accommodate the text. Be cautious. Avoid negativity. And write friendly. And I have some subtext that I'd also like to add. All right, so now I noticed that as I was typing, my font face has changed from what was in the template to Arial. So I'm going to click on my font, and I'm going to choose a different font face. I'm going to go back to the Source Sans Pro that was used before. Now the other thing that I want to change in this section is the images that are next to each of these guidelines. I don't need this image of a graph, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to move the gears over to the privacy settings because I think that that actually does fit with that option. I'm going to leave the light bulb for be cautious and I'm going to delete the document. And then I'm going to add two more images to replace those that I deleted from the silhouette category and web icons. And I'm going to find something that has to do with negativity, a thumbs down. Move it into place, drag the corner to make it a bit larger. Now if I want to use the same color as the other images are, I find out what color. We've got 110, 64, 0, 110 red, 64 green, 0 blue. So I select the image that I just inserted and change the fill color to match. And then I need an icon for Write Friendly. So that section is completed. And for my fifth guideline, I'm going to talk about keeping social networking profiles current. And I have a statistic that I've gotten from one of my resources that I'm going to replace in this section. Now I need to move the image of the cell phone up so that it's not being blocked by the green background. So I click on that element, I right click on it, and I choose the Arrange Bring to Front. It looks like I need to move sources down just a bit so that it's not being blocked by that image. I'm going to add one more element before I publish it. I'm just going to add my name. My infographic is complete. It is saved. So I'm going to publish it. Now for this demonstration I am using the free basic account. So the options that are available to me are in, include having the brand, the Visme brand, on my project. I can publish it online. It provides me a link. So I can just copy this link and share it with others. I can also share it directly on social media. And I can download it into a JPEG. The other options are not available to me in the basic account. So if I want to view my published infographic, I click that link and there it is.